crowdfunding, fundraising, equity crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Start Engine, perks, VC funding, rewards. So many terms that can refer to so many different things and yet get confused for each other all the time. Today, we're gonna set the record straight. You'll know the difference between each major way of raising money and have a better idea of which way is best for you. Stick to the end for something you should keep in mind before raising money for your startup with equity crowdfunding. All right, the first thing is understanding equity crowdfunding and the rise of the crowd. So crowds have been harnessed over the last couple decades to have a massive impact on raising money for companies and for all kinds of things, causes, so on and so forth. Crowdfunding actually traces its roots way back to where people were donating pennies to help build the Statue of Liberty way back in the day. And the organizers reached out to hundreds and thousands of people to all donate a penny to help get the Statue of Liberty finished and installed. Fast forward to today, the internet has been an incredible enabler of connecting people. And one of the side benefits of that is that it's never been easier to communicate with lots and lots of people for different causes and initiatives. And that has resulted in crowdfunding for a lot of different things. Whether it's you're trying to raise money for a nonprofit or for your friend or family that just went through a difficult time, or you're a company and you wanna launch a new product but you don't have enough money to cover the upfront costs of putting in your initial order of inventory. It's also now extended to buying equity in companies and helping those companies grow through investing. Let's just talk about common misconceptions in crowdfunding. So you have companies like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and then you have other companies like Start Engine, WeFunder, Republic, where both harness crowds. But one of the big difference is that one, you are giving perks in order to compensate or reward people for backing your campaign. And then the other, you are actually giving away equity. Although sometimes you can also add additional perks uh, to those to those equity investments. The main goal though of the two is for Kickstarter, the main goals are product validation, right? Like I wanna put a product out there and see if people actually want it. It could also be to get your costs down low enough that people can actually afford your product. Because in many cases, you have to put in a huge initial order in order to get the price down low enough that people would actually buy the product. You know, a good example of this is my buddy wanted to launch a watch brand. So what he did is he went out and he found a bunch of different manufacturers of watches, worked with them to design the watch that he wanted to have made. Then he went on Kickstarter and launched his campaign and raised ten dollars to $15,000. He then took that ten dollars to $15,000 and used it for his initial purchase of inventory. And because he was putting in a large enough order, that ten dollars to $15,000, he was able to get the cost on the watches low enough that people could actually afford to buy them. If he had had to just buy one custom watch, that would have been incredibly expensive. Or if he had to buy 10 or 20 and couldn't buy you know, the thousand or so that he wanted and needed, it would have been way more expensive and nobody would have bought his product. So Kickstarter can be in a fantastic way of getting in front of customers, but also tackling some of these like upfront costs that are pretty hefty. And that was really like the idea behind Kickstarter, right? It's this idea like we're gonna kickstart your business. Um, Start Engine and some of these other equity crowdfunding platforms are a little bit different. The idea here is they want to open up the opportunity to invest in their company to anybody, to retail investors, not just the rich. And so equity crowdfunding can be a really great mechanism for pulling in investors and raising money for your business. Not money that can be used not just for your initial purchase inventory, but also to hire more people, spend money on marketing, right? All of the things that you would do with a normal investment from a venture capitalist. And there are some other great side benefits too of doing equity crowdfunding. Similar to Kickstart, you, Kickstarter, you can validate your market. You can bring on a bunch of customers to, to your platform to become advocates for your brand, right? They're, they're, they have a, they're incentivized to go out and share your brand with their friends because they want you to be successful because they have a vested interest as an investor in your company. All of those things are possible with equity crowdfunding that are hard to replicate with traditional venture funding. Which brings me to what is the difference between VC funding and equity crowdfunding? Well, the biggest difference is that venture capital, generally speaking, is institutional. 
What that means is there is an institution, there is a business where their job is to invest in companies, right? As a venture capitalist, I go out and I convince investors to give me money, I manage their money, and I invest it into companies. And then I help those companies become successful, right? And when they are successful, that generates returns and I pay that back to my investors. It's a job, it's a career, right? I'm a professional, it's institutional. That's the big difference. Equity crowdfunding, on the other hand, if you're gonna raise money there, you have to go through what's called a dealer broker, somebody that's registered with the SEC and given permission to help raise money for startups. Typically, these are portals. So these portals are like Start Engine, right? Where they list lots of different businesses. They ensure that the companies are meeting the regulatory requirements and being transparent. They collect all of the money, they put it into entities, and then they invest in the company. And then they manage that investment on behalf of the retail investors. In that case, it's a little bit different. Instead of going to one, two, or three venture funds and raising money, you're going to, in some cases, literally millions of individuals who are all kicking in small checks. And this can be good and bad. The good part of it is that you get thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands advocates out there talking about your product. You also get to participate in this like almost social mission of like, hey, we're gonna help the retail investors get rich just like the rich do when they invest in venture deals. There are some downsides though. It can be expensive and costly to go out and raise money from investors when you're only collecting $100 at a time. You might have to spend as much on marketing to get that person to invest in your company as they're actually going to invest, right? It might cost you $100 to get a $100 investment, in which case it may or may not be worth it, right? And you'll have to, you'll have to decide for yourself. Another reason why typically entrepreneurs like institutional investors is because institutional investors bring a level of rigor, a level of advice, uh, a level of professionalism that retail investors don't. And you only have to deal with you know, one VC who invested in your company or a handful of investors that invest in your company, not thousands of people that have put in money and are now banging down your door wondering when they're gonna get their money back, right? Especially retail investors who are a little less sophisticated and may not fully understand that when they make an investment, it's not a loan, You're, they're buying equity. They already got paid and they got paid with stock and they can't get their money back until there's some sort of liquidity event, like your company gets acquired or goes public. And so sometimes that misunderstanding right can cause some friction. So just things that like you should keep in mind if you decide to go the equity crowdfunding route. So which one is best for you? Here's the thing, if you need to launch a consumer product but you can't meet the initial minimums to have that product manufactured, but you're able to bootstrap the rest of your business and you don't need to raise equity funding, then use Kickstarter. It's a phenomenal platform. You're still gonna have to go out. You can't just list your thing on Kickstarter and expect, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? You actually have to go out and spend some time, you know, telling people about it and getting them to come and support your Kickstarter campaign. But it can be a great mechanism for testing out your product ideas, for getting people involved and getting the word out about what you're doing. On the other hand, if you need to launch a B2B product or grow your current sales, then venture capital or equity crowdfunding is probably a better fit. And the reason for that is like, if I go on Kickstarter and I tell them about this super cool B2B software that I built, what am I gonna give as perks, right? How many people are really gonna need that software and be willing to kick in some money to help me develop it? Probably not that many. On the other hand, venture capital funds and equity crowdfunding, like they'll get it, right? Like they don't need a reward outside of the stock. And they can typically write much larger checks. So, you know, the average campaign on Kickstarter is only raises, you know, sub $100,000, whereas the average venture capital round is typically you know, millions of dollars. And that can be super helpful in terms of getting your company off the ground and running. Equity crowdfunding is probably somewhere in between those two, right? It sits between what you could raise on Kickstarter and a venture capitalist. And based on, you know, this isn't like scientific, but just screening through a bunch of campaigns, it looks like the average campaign probably raises kind of a, a couple hundred thousand dollars as well. Although you can raise up to five if you have a really strong audience and you're willing to put in the effort to really drive investors. Here's the thing, some people that do equity crowdfunding think that because they can just put it on this portal, they'll get lots of investors that come to them. It's gonna be way easier than raising money from venture capitalists. But this is usually not true. 
it's usually a lot of work reaching out to a lot of people. It's almost like running another marketing campaign for selling your product. Except for in this case, you're selling part of your company. In my experience, talking to people that have raised money from venture capitalists and those that have raised money on equity crowdfunding, it ends up being about the same amount of work. The only difference is that the work that you do is a little bit different. When you're raising equity crowdfunding, it's really like a mass market campaign, right? Just like any other consumer product. You're, you're sending out email campaigns, you're putting together videos, you're reaching out to everybody that you know and telling them about how great your business is. Right, you're selling the business as opposed to selling a product. And in some cases, like it could be even more challenging because you're selling them on the idea that your product is a good one and you're selling them on the idea that like your business is a good one. The flip side though of that, of course, is that people can oftentimes invest a lot more than they would spend on your product. So you've got people that will write $10,000, $50,000 checks as investments into your company that would never spend anywhere close to that on your products over their entire lifetime. So a bit of a trade-off, but a lot of work. On the venture capital side, when you go to raise venture capital, it's also a lot of work, but it's not a mass market approach. Instead, of it's usually a networking approach, right? You're trying to leverage your network and people you know to make introductions to venture capitalists so you can get in front of them, give them the pitch, answer their questions, and hopefully convince them that you have an idea that's worth backing. And both can take a lot of time. I would say on average, most funding rounds, whether it's equity crowdfunding or venture capital, will take somewhere around three months from start to finish. So keep that in mind when you're budgeting when your time and when you wanna start fundraising. So even though equity crowdfunding in some cases can actually be more work than raising money from venture capitalists, it does yield some huge benefits that VCs really can't touch. It, like I said earlier, it makes your customers into advocates with skin in the game and gets them out there telling everybody about the awesome things that you're doing, which is awesome, right? You could get tens of thousands of those people out there and have a massive shift on your business. All right, if this was interesting and helpful, check out my other video where I talk about how to get an internship in venture capital. Thanks.